Hi guys! When I'm out uh, in the woods on my own, uh, I usually carry a little stove like this. This is just a simple, see, little stove. You put your pot on it, you can cook your coffee, cook your meals. Great stuff, very efficient. You only need like uh, a few dead twigs and you're done. But if you're staying a bit longer or you are with more than, than, than one person, like a small group, uh, the fire, the kitchen gets a whole new kind of function. It's also like a social function. And uh, those uh, people that have been with me on a course, they know when we are out uh, in the woods, uh, we kind of, kind of, quite often use these kind of things. But yeah, everybody is sitting with their own little fire, making their own food. It's, it's ready in different times and uh, it's, it's kind of not so nice, it's not so social. So when you're staying at a certain place or you're staying for the night, there is kind of a need to uh, create more of a, a community campfire. Of course, not, not everywhere is a good place to have a larger fire, and I'm thinking mostly of uh, forest fire hazards, hazards and so on, and then this stuff just is great. It works and uh, pretty, pretty safe. But yeah, if we make a campfire, and we've seen it also on courses, then we're still having all these small pots and stuff. You could make a tripod, but then nobody wanted to have the big pot in his backpack or a large griddle and so on. So how are we going to deal with these issues? I'm going to show you uh, a simple way to make a camp kitchen, a kind of griddle that has more than one function actually that you can use both for cooking, drying out your wood and so on. So yeah, th that's the task for today. There are some pretty fancy uh, camp kitchen uh, designs out there and, uh, and I would say that yeah, they are great but they are specifically great if you're creating a base camp. The whole idea now is to make a very simple but functional little camp just for one night or for a few days, but not, not like a more permanent base camp. And the only thing that you need is uh, a few pieces of dead wood. You can find them. They might be green as well. Uh, in, in the case that you use green wood, I would really, really urge you to uh, use a type of wood that you can a saw off a larger tree like to coppice. Don't use pines or spruce or stuff like that because they will just die of it. If you have a, a nice birch or some kind of willow kind of salix type of wood just take away some branches. The tree won't get harmed at all and, and will grow new. So uh, but yeah that's what you need. I just found this here. This is all dead. Uh, it's been lying here for a long time and I'm finally going to use it. You don't really need so much but uh, a few bits and preferably quite straight bits. It doesn't need to be really straight but a little bit straight. You also need a bit of cordage. Well, it can be all kinds of stuff. You usually have some cordage with you to tie up your tarp or whatever or you can use even the bark of this one which is a nice salix type. It is straight. You can get really nice bits of cordage from it. So the first thing I will do is I will cut off two longer bits of the most rugged pieces. So that's usually the bottom of the sticks, because they will be uh, the two uh, bits that are lying horizontally. And they need to have a bit of strength. It's not really a lot, but you, if you have it, uh, the trees are usually tapered. Take the bottom bits. Now make sure that the other bit is just as long. You can do that with your knife as well, of course. They are not that thick that you wouldn't be able to uh, get this away with your knife, but uh, I have a nice barker with me now. Talking about knives, feeling a bit naked. Much better. I'm going to need that later. So I got myself two bits. This is going to be the basically the size of the griddle we are going to create. So that's how you determine the length. And you need to have some excess length. So yeah. Between my hands will be the, the usable area, so, so to speak, somewhere there. Two bits, great. 
Now I need to make four legs. Right. Now I got four legs. Now I need four little pins extra. And I think they can be about the same size. These pins are, they are going to uh, give you a height of the griddle, but it is adjustable, so don't make them too short. The other ones are going to determine the width. So I think it's almost the same size, I guess. Yeah, something like this. Did I need four more of these? I've got four of these pins. They're slightly longer than the, than the legs, but that's okay. Well, that's about all the material we need. Now only the four pieces of cordage. So, now we need four equal-sized little loops of cordage. Like this. It's black, so a bit hard to see. There it is. Right. Doesn't really matter how big, but about this size. It depends on the size of your sticks and everything. Now I don't like cutting up my cordage. I uh, use it for many many things. So uh, when I have a bit like this and I need two loops I just put the other loop on this and let this bit hanging about. So This should be almost the same size. Well, and it is. Great. I need two more of those. So, now I got my two other loops. This bit of cordage was a bit longer, and I thought it was annoying, so I hanged that up in just a little burnt here. So, Like I said, I don't like cutting up cordage because uh, I'd rather have a long bit than uh, many short bits. So now I'm ready to show you the construction. It's, uh, it's almost a bit of magic, but it works really nice. So here we have all the uh, pieces laid out. You see the two long ones, the four legs, and these are uh, part of the construction, construction, which I will now demonstrate. And this is where you had the loops for. you probably start to understand where I'm going at with this. So, this is how it looks with all the four legs on. It's pretty stable construction once you do it right. It's, uh, it's a bit of fiddling to get the, the, the sta stability. It only is stable if there is enough pressure on it, if you've pressed it down quite good, if all the pins are completely straight, and of course the loop should be on the outside. But it, usually when you set it up it has a tendency to, to flip over or collapse. Uh, Basically, the, the, the thing is only stable when complete. That's a bit of the problem. And when you fiddle with it to, to set it up, yeah, collapsing, it might do a few times, but uh, you will get it right at a point. And now this is ready for use. I'll give you a bit of a walk around to see it up close, and then we start using it. You see, this one is on top of the leg. This one is under the leg, but on top of the vertical carrier and this one is under it. 
So when pressure comes down here, this creates a stability and becomes a load-bearing construction. Same on the other side. Note the rope is on the outside, then the leg, then the, the vertical one. Same here, same stuff, just a bit more rope over. So, this is the kitchen in action. I'm going to make some lunch and at the same time cook my water for a nice cup of coffee. You just take these little small pins and of course they will burn up after a while, you have to take that into account. But you can constantly have new ones, you can dry out your wood where the food is now, you can put new wood to dry out for under it. This is really great. And if you use these very wet or green, they will not burn out very fast. You can grill your meat, you can cook your water, you can do anything you like. So, that's the camp kitchen and I'm going to make my lunch. Got some nice pork, red onion, and red peppers. That'll be great. Coming along really nice. It's an excellent way to cook your meals, especially when you're a few people out, have a nice campsite. You can stay a few days. Just make sure you have enough of these uh, pins that you use as supports. That's a nice sound, isn't it? The sound of lunch being cooked. Yummy! I just changed one of the sticks. This one, because there was a very thin one there. You just need to be taking care of that. But normally if you have like green sticks, you won't burn them through a whole meal. If you use dead wood, it better be a bit wet. You've got some nice places you can make your own little work area here to put some stuff, to put some stuff off the fire, but still warm. I love this setup. A bit hot with this plastic bag. That will do. Let's put the lid on that. Put it a bit more in the fire. That one is getting hot. That one is actually cooking already. So. Awesome! Mmm, delicious. And my coffee is ready at the same time. That's not something uh, I'm used to when I'm out using my hobo stove, really. But that is exactly what you want when you're with a group of friends, camping a night out, a few nights. You want to have this social function. You want to be, want to be able to cook several things at the same time. And have a bit of fun in the, while we're at it. Should I call it? Camp griddle, basically. Whatever it's called, it's, uh, it's really handy and it works a treat. Dry out your wood, cook your food. It's just a very simple and nice uh, little construction that uh, makes your life out in the woods just a bit more nicer.
and then a little trick if you need some more intense heat just suspend your coffee pot that way the fire gets a bit low you need to cook it up that works nicely well see you all in the next film guys hope you like it